Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Athira Ravindranath, Pediatric Gastroenterologist. Today we are going to talk about approach to neonatal cholestasis. How do you approach a child with neonatal cholestasis? So it's not just enough to know the etiologies because it's a big list. So how do you know which are the tests to be done in a given baby? So we will, we will try to classify these babies as sick and non-sick. Non-sick, the typical example is a baby with biliary atresia. Where the baby is otherwise happy, growing well, gaining weight. Everything is okay except for the cholestasis. Okay. So the non-sick babies, if, if they come to you, the next question you have to ask for is the stool color. Is the stool pale or pigmented? Now, if it's a first time mother, she may not know what is exactly pale and pigmented. Sometimes it may be in between where we call it the ambiguous stool color. So then quickly show this stool chart. This was developed by Taiwan, but we ourselves have another stool chart from Indian babies. So you can get it from the Indian Journal of Gastroenterology where there's a big paper published on the development of a stool card for our Indian children along with the urine uh, stains as well. So this, these four on this side, they consider, these are considered pale stools, whereas these are pigmented stools. Sometimes the ones in between may be, may be mistaken as ambiguous. So if it's a neonatal cholestasis in a baby who's growing well with pale stools, the first entity that you should think of is biliary atresia. What are the other causes which can have a similar presentation? Cholidocal cyst, inspissated bile plug syndrome, and sometimes even a severe sclerosing cholangitis. Now, uh, why are these other causes coming? Because you must have only heard of biliary atresia, biliary atresia, biliary atresia when there's a pale stool. You just have to understand the pathophysiology. There is a complete blockage of bile output to the to the small intestine which is causing the paleness of the stool because the pigmentation in the stool is contributed by the bile. That's why sometimes when babies have diarrhea, the mothers would come and say the stools are green because the bile is, uh, bile is being secreted and then it's not, it's not having enough time for reabsorption. So bile will lend the color to the stool. And that bile doesn't reach the intestine, it can lead to pale stool. So, biliary atresia, classical example, cholidocal cyst. So, cholidocal cyst will have a dilated uh, extra biliary apparatus with a very narrow area where it is uh, joining the ampulla. So, there, there is an obstruction to the bile drainage. Similarly, inspissated bile, bile plug syndrome where there will be a bile plug at the lower end of the CBD. Sclerosing cholangitis, especially if it's also involving the intrahepatic bile ducts, can cause pale stools. But you should also remember that any intrahepatic cause also, if it is severe enough, can sometimes cause pale stools. And with time, it can become pigmented as you treat these babies. Now, if the stools are pigmented in a well baby, then the causes that we should think of should be allergic syndrome and non-syndromic causes of paucity of intrahepatic bile ducts. There is a big list because allergic syndrome is called, is traditionally the syndromic cause of PILBD. Okay, non-syndromic causes will include sometimes cystic fibrosis and uh, torch infections, etc. Then PFIC, progressive familial intrahepatic cholestasis, bile acid synthetic defects, citrine deficiency can all present with a simple cholestasis of pigmented stools. Now, what do you mean by a sick baby? A sick baby, obviously all of you would understand as pediatric residents, but it's not just enough to assess the sickness from that point of view. Even a baby with ascites is a sick baby when there is cholestasis, right? So then you should think of these metabolic causes apart from sepsis, where sepsis itself can lead to the sickness. So think of all the other metabolic causes which can cause a synthetic dysfunction of the liver, which will include galactosemia, tyrosinemia, progressive familial intrahepatic cholestasis, especially type 2 and type 5, herpes simplex virus, gestational allomion liver disease, mitochondrial hepatopathies, Wolman disease, Neiman pick type C, HLH, hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, and this particular variety of urea cycle defect, ornithine transcarbamylase deficiency. So, first step is to just assess the sickness of the baby and then go ahead with the stool color assessment. Now, let's go to a baby with a 
pale stools. So always ask the mother to show the stools. Without seeing it yourself, do not believe because they may not be able to assess whether it is pigmented, ambiguous or pale. So, and also remember to see the core of the stool. Okay, you have to spread the stool and then see what exactly is the color of the core of the stool. You can see these two bottles here. So, this is a typical pigmented stool and this is a pale stool. Right? So, no confusion in this. So, if there are pale stools, consider biliary atresia. But as I told you earlier, pale stool is not equal to biliary atresia because anything which will prevent an adequate bile drainage can cause pale stools. But we are hammering on biliary atresia because this is a time-dependent disease because you have to send these babies for Kasai's Porter and Trostomy on time. Now, pale stools are there means the HIDA scan is going to be non-excretory. It's simple because HIDA would see whether the bile is getting secreted into the intestines or not. When the stools are only pale, HIDA is not going to give you any new information. Irrespective of the etiology, it could be biliary atresia, it could be cholidocal cyst, it could be some other severe intrahepatic cholestasis which is preventing the bile from entering the intestine. In all these cases, the HIDA is going to be non-excretory. So, the HIDA scan is useless in a baby with a clear-cut pale stools. So, you should think of further investigations for confirming the etiology rather than waste time for priming this baby for five days and sending for HIDA scan. So, look at these stools. So, these are classically pale stools. If this kind of a baby goes for HIDA scan, it is going to be non-excretory. So, where is a HIDA going to be useful? It's going to be useful in cases with ambiguous stools. When you are not able to clearly mark whether they are pale stools or pigmented stools, that is when HIDA is going to be helpful because in that case, the stools are going to be pigmented. Uh, if it is pigmented or if it is ambiguous, then HIDA will be excretory. And if it is excretory, you can rule out biliary atresia. Whereas if it is non-excretory, you should still consider other causes apart from biliary atresia and work towards them.